Hey everybody, uh, my name is Aiden with Pressure Cooker Passion. We're going to be starting our program, uh, Instant Pot 101, in about a minute. Um, and you'll have to excuse any of the noise you hear in the background. That's just my lovely family, uh, as I am home with them <laughs> uh, during the COVID-19 crisis. But uh, we're going to make the best of it, and we're going to try to have fun tonight. Hi, this is Rose. She ran in. She wanted to say hi. Say hi, Rosie. Hi. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll give people a couple minutes to get in. Um, and I think I posted the recipes um, in the live description, so you should be able to get everything there. Oh. Come here. Oh, <laughs> just doing some baby wrangling here um, <laughs> so I'm really happy to be doing this for Elwood Library um, my wife had worked there for how long did you work there seven years, seven years. she was a librarian at Elwood Library so uh, she might pop in and say hi later um, but I know that it's seven o'clock and something that's been happening lately and you know I did it with my last class and I thought it was really really cool um, doing a little clapping for all the essential workers out there. Thank you so much for everything you're doing um, during the COVID-19 crisis. We truly appreciate it. Um, so doctors, nurses, hospital workers, janitors. You want to clap with me? Clap. Say thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, this is Amelia. <laughs> but thank you seriously to everybody who's an essential worker out there. We really appreciate it. Um, everything you're doing is wonderful. Grocery store clerks, um, any essential workers, blood lab technicians, um, everybody. Thank you so much for everything you do. Um, we truly appreciate it. Um, if you want to um, ask me questions, um, you can check out my website, PressureCookerPassion.com, um, and you can email me there. Um, you might be able to post them in the chat. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to read them, um, but you can always give it a shot. Um, and we'll see if it's working. <clears throat> and um, all right, so it's 7:02. Um, you want to come say hi? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we do have uh, a couple things to go over tonight. We're going to be going through. Um, oh. I can't get in here. Where is it? Hi. Hi. I don't this know who's I... watching this. If anybody's watching, <laughs> but I miss Ellen. I miss you guys. Okay. This is my handsome husband. Oh, thank you. I'm going to be eating whatever <laughs> you yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> so we'll try to get going now. Um, all right, so what we're going to cover tonight is really just some one-on-one -on -one basics, all right? So um, one of the most common questions I get, uh, or comments I get when I do these programs in libraries is that I have an Instant Pot at home, but I've never actually taken it out of the box. Um, <clears throat> if you're like me and a lot of people in New York State or in country and you're stuck at home, um, this might be a perfect opportunity to actually try to use your Instant Pot that's been in the box since you got it as a gift for, you know, Christmas or Mother's Day or Father's Day or your birthday, um, or you ordered it on an impulse because you heard everybody had one and you got it and said, no, I'm probably going to use this. Um, so that's definitely one of the most common um, points of feedback that I get when I do these programs. So we're going to go through a couple different things. Um, one, what do you do when you get it out of the box? How do you set it up? Um, two, general assembly. Three, cleaning. Um, how do you maintain it? Um, and then just a couple of quick tips to help you get started. Um, and then we'll make a couple of really pantry-friendly meals. Um, we basically, do we? I don't want anybody to go out to buy things because you know they feel like, oh my gosh, he had this ingredient that you know, for this recipe, and I really want to try to replicate it. Please stay home. Please stay safe. Um, you know, keep your social distancing intact. And um, <clears throat> We're really going to try to just use things that hopefully you'll have these ingredients in your pantry um, and you'll be able to make a couple things. If not, you know, maybe we can do some substitutions or, you know, you can get a little creative and, and try to think outside the box um, with and work with the ingredients that you do have. All right. So that being said, um, it's 7.05 now, so we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. So you have your Instant Pot. You've just taken it out of the box. There's a bunch of things in plastic. There's a bunch of styrofoam. You discard that. Um, inside the box, you are going to get one Instant Pot. Um, it will have a lid. It will have a inner pot that looks like this. 
a lid that looks like this. It will come with a couple of um, other, um, I guess, accessories inside the box. So you're going to get a steamer rack, which actually looks like this, or a trivet. Um, you're also going to get um, a measuring cup. You're going to get some instruction manuals. Um, one is like kind of like a cooking guide for different cooking times. The other is a um, a user guide, like a just a general instant pot manual. So it'll give you you know really in depth descriptions about how to maintain the pot, um, what all the different features mean. Um, so th that's all really helpful when you're getting started if you want to just kind of skim that and see what it says. Um, so okay, now you've taken it out of the box. You hopefully you know skim the manual. You've got the gist of what you're supposed to do down. What do you do first? Okay, so the first thing you do is you take it out and you plug it in. You plug in the outer pot here. There's a cord. Um, you can use any typical home outlet. Um, you're going to take this pot. Uh, it's a stainless steel insert. It goes in the um, outer pot. You take the inner pot and you're just going to wash it with some soap and water. Um, and then you will dry it off and slide it into the outer pot. You will take your lid like this. This is what your lid looks like. You will do the same thing. You will wash it with soap and water. You will rinse it, dry it off. Um, if this part, this is called a um, silicone sealing ring. It actually goes right along the track here on the lid. I'm going to hold this track up. So this is your track right here. And what you do is you basically just take this silicone insert. And some of the models actually have this already in there when you open it. And some of them you have to put it in. Um, and you just take it and you kind of push it down all the way around. Oh, thank you, Carrie. Yes, this is a nice shirt that Carrie helped uh, design. My brother actually did the logo, and I think Carrie helped me uh, get this. Carrie, another ex Elwood library. All right, so we're sliding this down and we're pushing this all around. Oh, I think she still works there part time, actually. So, um, all right, regardless, this is in there now. It should be flush all the way around. Just run your finger around here, make sure it is on nice and tight. All right, what you do next is you take three cups of water, you will dump it in here, and you're going to take your lid and put it on your Instant Pot. So when you are facing your Instant Pot, the buttons will be towards you, and this part in the back that kind of protrudes out a little bit, that is going to face towards the back of the pot, all right? I'm just going to tilt this down so you guys can see. There is a matching area that protrudes out on the outer pot. Basically, what you're going to do is line this up. So you're going to kind of put it on with um, this part kind of pointing to, let's say, like 10 o'clock. All right. It'll make a little bit of music once you slide it on. Okay. Um, and then you're going to slide it um, and twist it uh, clockwise, and that'll lock it in place. Okay. Uh, this is the, the testing phase. Next thing you do is you push pressure cook. And you're going to use these plus and minus signs to adjust the time. So I'm going to hit plus, um, and I'm going to set it for five minutes. I'm going to make sure this valve in the back. Show you again. This is your sealing valve. Hold it up close. You can either have it set to vent or to seal. We're going to make sure it's set in the seal position. So this is kind of like at nine o'clock. Pressure cook five minutes. Set it to seal. And then we're going to wait. So basically what's going to happen is it's going to say on. Um, and that's basically when the steam is starting to build in there. It's the pressurization process. Pressurization process can take anywhere from 5 to like 18 minutes, depending on what you have in there. Um, so if you have a lot of liquid or if you have some very dense material that you're cooking, um, so I'm talking about dried beans, maybe a um, big piece of meat, uh, pork shoulder, pork butt, something like that, it could take up to like 18 minutes for it to pressurize. Um, not always the case, but certainly happens from time to time. Um, but basically what's going to happen is the liquid is going to turn into steam. The steam is going to uh, build and build and build inside the pot. Um, and then after it builds for a while, a little pin called your float pin is going to pop up Boop, like that. So once the float pin pops up, that means that there's a lot of steam inside the pot and is fairly close to pressurizing. And then um, after it pops up, within a minute or two, this will change from on to the time we entered earlier. So um, in the instance of you know the, the testing process, it will say five minutes, okay? Um, so it'll switch from on to five minutes. Let's see an example of this once we start cooking. Um, so. 
let's say that five minutes has gone by, okay, um, what we're gonna do is actually release all the steam. So when we release the steam, we twist that valve from the seal position to the vent position. The vent position is kind of like, um, I would say seven o'clock if you're looking at a clock. Um, that releases all the steam from the instant pot. You can release the lid safely once the, the float pin, we talked about earlier, has come back down. That means you can unlock the pot. You will, um, you can either wait till it cools off or you can grab like a kitchen towel or um, an oven mitt, discard any liquid in here. You don't need it anymore. And then you can start cooking, all right? So you will be able to start pressure cooking um, basically immediately from there. So that is how you get started. Um, another thing I wanna mention uh, that I frequently get questions on is what is, uh, volume seems low, okay. Um, is that any better, Maureen? All right. Well, I'm going to do my best. I don't have an external microphone. I'm just working with the uh, microphone on my computer. Um, so I hope you guys can hear me. <clears throat> um, okay. So anyway, uh, the next thing you would want to do is actually, um, oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, so what is the Instant Pot? At, at its heart, it's really a multi-cooker. So what a multi-cooker is, it's basically a, um, a cooking tool that can do multiple things. Um, it has multiple methods of cooking, all right? So um, there's a bunch of preset buttons up top, right? So the way I kind of describe these, they are like preset buttons on a microwave, right? So your microwave has a button for popcorn, it has a defrost button, it has like a button for potatoes, um, so on and so forth. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can heat things up or cook things in the Instant Pot uh, by using these presets. Presets on this model, um, which is a uh, six quart are soup broth, meat stew, bean chili, poultry, rice, multigrain, porridge, and steam. So um, essentially what's going on there is uh, the Instant Pot is kind of deemed uh, a certain temperature and uh, a recommended time for cooking these things. Um, it kind of regulates it itself. Um, they work really well if you are kind of intimidated or not very into cooking. Um, I recommend using them. You can throw some chicken in there, um, look up the in the Instant Pot cookbook that comes in the box, uh, see what the recommended cook time is for, let's say, bone-in chicken thighs, hit poultry, um, adjust the time accordingly, seal the lid, and then that's it. You know, as long as there's liquid in there and um, the chicken's in there and it's set up right, they'll cook fine. Um, you won't have any issues. All right. If you are um, feeling adventurous and you want to get off of the presets that are up here, there's a whole bunch of other uh, buttons down below. Um, so one of the most frequently used ones is saute, um, and that's basically going to function like an electric skillet. So um, the heat source at the bottom of the Instant Pot will begin to warm. It'll heat the stainless steel insert in here, um, and then you can do things like saute onions. Um, there's actually three settings, and I'm not sure if you can see. Um, they're kind of toggling between the three temperature settings right here. Move my finger so you can see. Um, so the three settings are less, normal, and more. Um, and that basically means low, medium, and high. I'm not sure why they use less, normal, and more, but that's the language that they chose. Um, less is, you know, if you were doing something like caramelizing some onions, you could use less. Normal would be like your medium setting on your stovetop. Uh, more if you were doing something to potentially, um, you know, sear some meat, um, or if you wanted to just flash fry something really quickly before you, you pressure cook it you could use more, all right? Um, so when you turn off um, or switch from one function to another, there's a very important button that's called cancel. So um, there's a lot of Instant Pot recipes that call for you to saute something and then pressure cook it. Um, it's one of the big appeals of using the Instant Pot that you could do so many one pot dishes. Um, I know a lot of people ask me, you know, I have a crock pot at home and one of the things I don't like is that, you know, sometimes I have to do things on the stove top and then transfer it into the crock pot um, and cook it that way. So with the Instant Pot, you don't really have to do that. Um, but what you will have to do is like, let's say you saute some things in here, maybe some onions. Afterwards, you're gonna hit cancel because you wanna cancel the saute function. And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is um, you know, choose your next setting, whether that be slow cook, you know, pressure cook. Um, if you were making yogurt, you could just saute to boil the milk beforehand. So um, cancel is basically going to be used in between uh, any function switching, all right? So that's an important button. You're also gonna to wanna to cancel things after you finish cooking it. Um, it's not imperative, but it is good because it'll help things not overcook um, if they are kind of you know, sensitive to being in there a little longer. <clears throat> okay, 
So um, the slow cook button's up here. If you love your crock pot or your slow cooker at home um, and you don't want to get rid of it, you can always kind of use the slow cook function in here. It works really well. Um, it is stainless steel instead of having that um, nonstick uh, like porcelain uh, that the crock pot comes with. There are nonstick inserts that you can buy separately. They're $30, um, you know, if you really enjoy cooking that way. You can just get one of those and basically simulate any dish that you would make in your slow cooker. Um, another one I'll call out is probably the most used feature and the reason that the Instant Pot is so popular is the pressure cook function. Uh, so more or less, the Instant Pot is an electric pressure cooker. Um, <clears throat> so the way it works is you can push the pressure cook button and you can choose between low pressure and high pressure. Um, low pressure basically just means that the temperature is around 112 to 114 degrees Celsius. High pressure goes up to 116. Most recipes tend to use high pressure, but every now and again you will see one for low pressure. <clears throat> um, so uh, the pressure cook function is, is basically the most important function on here. Almost every dish that you're going to find online for the Instant Pot will use the pressure cook function. Um, the way pressure cooking works, if you're not familiar with it, is um, after that, you know, uh, pressurized environment is created and we can reach those high temperatures that I just mentioned, 112, 116 degrees Celsius, um, the food starts to cook fast, much faster than you could on a stovetop because the hottest temperature you can get on your stovetop is boiling water, so that's 100 degrees Celsius. So we're adding an extra 12 to 16 degrees and that basically translates into cook times that are much faster, up to 16 times faster. Um, so what does that mean? You could do a pot roast in 40 minutes. You can do dry beans, no soak in 50 minutes. Um, so there are a lot of advantages to using the Instant Pot um, in the sense that you can really expedite some of those longer cooks that you, you know, may have taken you a couple hours on a weekend. So um, definitely, probably, definitely the most popular button and the most useful button in here. Okay, um, so we've covered buttons, pressurization, um, cleaning. Okay, so the other question I get a lot is how do you clean it? Um, so the way I clean it is I usually do it in my sink. I just wash it. Um, I use something called Barkeeper's Friend, which is a stainless steel cleaner. It works really, really well. You can use it on pots and pans or if you have a stainless steel sink um, or on the inserts in the, the pressure cooker and uh, in the Instant Pot. So you can put the, the powder cleaning solution in there. Um, if you want, you can just use soap and water too. I use like a scratchy side of the sponge. I go in a circular motion, follow the grooves. Um, <clears throat> with the lid, I clean it by hand usually too. Um, same thing, I wash it. Uh, I usually don't use the barkeeper's friend on here. You rarely get anything getting stuck to this. Um, so just a sponge and soap and water. I remove the silicone insert and I usually um, clean that by hand. Um, but you can put these in the dishwasher. So you can actually put this lid right on the top rack of your dishwasher because it's not as hot up there. Um, you can put this on the bottom rack. I mean, it's really just a stainless steel pot, so you can treat it like you would any stainless steel um, powder pan in your house. All right? Um, <clears throat> okay. So now that we've talked about um, all the different options, uh, the general assembly, um, how to get started once you get it out of the box, we're going to go ahead and try to cook a couple of um, meals for you tonight. Um, again, I'm going to say if you don't have the ingredients, please don't go out and get them. Wait until it's safe order them, um, or we can, you know, you can always kind of try to think of ways to work around it with different things. If you don't have onions, use onion powder. If you don't have garlic, use garlic powder. Um, if you don't have cream, use milk. Uh, so just try to come up with ways that, you know, will, will keep you safe and, and keep you from having to go to the store if you don't have to. All right, <clears throat> so um, I'm gonna actually hit saute, and the first dish we're gonna do is our uh, creamy pasta, okay? So I hit the saute, and what's gonna happen now um, they do ask you to enter a time for saute, so if you ever come into the instance where there's like a very time-specific um, saute direction in a recipe, saute X or ingredient for four minutes, you can actually enter four minutes and, and get it done that way. Um, when it is ready, it'll switch from on and then it'll read hot, okay? Um, once it says hot, that means that um, you are ready to add your oil and, and start cooking. All right, so let me get the ingredients here.
Okay, so as far as our ingredients go tonight, let me stand right here. We have um, one cup onion diced. Uh, if you don't want onion, you can use some onion powder. We have some two thirds of a cup of Parmesan cheese. We have some penny pasta. You can use any medium sized pasta. You can use bow tie, you can use uh, rigatoni, you can do spiral pasta. Anything that's in that medium sized pasta range. I'm going to be using a uh, 28, 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. I'm going to be using um, a half a cup of heavy cream. I'm going to be using two cups of stock. If you don't have stock, you can definitely use water. Um, one tablespoon of olive oil, a quarter teaspoon of cracked pepper or you know black pepper if you have it, um, one <clears throat> half teaspoon of oregano. Um, we're also going to be using uh, let's see, get everything. Uh, one yep, half teaspoon of salt and is that everything? Yep. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. We have two tablespoons of butter as well. All right. Switch back over here. Hi. All right. So um, the saute function is on. Um, it doesn't say hot yet, but I'm feeling in here. It's pretty warm already. I'm going to go ahead and add our olive oil. Um, and then we're going to add in our onion. Let's see if it's ready. Not quite yet. We need another minute, so we'll wait. We want it to be nice and hot when we get it in there. All right. Um, but basically, the first thing we're going to do is add our onion in and let it saute for a couple minutes. All right. Okay, question to everybody in the chat. Are you enjoying making three square meals a day at home and doing all the dishes as much as I am? It's been fun. <laughs> but uh, I was joking around with some people at a program the other night that we really just can't wait to go get something to eat outside of the house uh, once it's safe to leave. <clears throat> all right. I hear the onions starting to get a little warmer. We're going to give it another minute. To get going here. There we go. Alright. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add those onions in. Like so and grab a spoon. All right, so what I'm going to do now is just saute these until they're soft, until they get translucent, translucent. Um, and we're going to release some of that onion flavor um, and soften it up. We'll toss in our garlic after that, um, and then we'll add in the rest of our ingredients. Now, in the meantime, we'll open up our pasta. We'll open up our can of tomatoes here. Now, if you don't have crushed tomatoes, you can easily use diced tomatoes, um, stewed tomatoes, tomato sauce, anything like that. Um, we're basically just looking for that acid um, component to be added into the dish. Okay. Let's give this a stir. You can see now that the Instant Pot has actually changed from uh, saute, um, sorry, from on to hot. All right, everything's starting to look Pretty good in there. We're just going to let it go for another 30 seconds or so. I'm going to continue to stir it so nothing really gets stuck to the bottom. I'll also say doing this from a seated position is a lot different than uh, doing it when I'm at the libraries. Um, 
And this is definitely one of the things that's cool about um, technology today, that I'm actually able to do these programs and connect with people, um, answer questions, and you know, still get out there and, and deliver some recipes that hopefully people will find useful. And get your mind off of things right now. Um, so I'm going to throw in my garlic right now. And after I throw the garlic, I'm actually going to hit cancel. It's, it's definitely hot enough in there. We're going to give this a stir. Make sure that nothing gets burnt or stuck to the bottom. After that, we're going to throw in our stock. So I like to use an unsalted chicken stock. Um, if you wanted to do a vegetarian vegetarian version of this, obviously you can use vegetable stock um, and skip the cheese part. Um, you could use a cheese substitute. Um, maybe do it with cashew milk instead of using milk, make it creamy. We're going to add in our tomatoes. And then the next thing we're going to do is three cups. Uh, two. Three. I actually think we can even add a little bit more here. There we go. Essentially, what we want is we want the um, Pasta to be um, right at the top of the surface. Um, if it's coming up and then poking through at the top, that that's fine. Um, but we kind of just want it to be you know, pretty much covered. So I probably just added another half cup in there. Um, all right. So additionally, we will add our seasoning, salt, pepper, and oregano. All right. Give it another stir. And what we'll do is we will put on our lid and we are going to pressure cook this for four minutes. That'll give us kind of an al dente pasta. If you prefer a softer pasta, go five minutes. If you prefer a very, very soft pasta, go six minutes. All right, so I'm going to hit pressure cook here. I'm going to put it on for five minutes. I'm going to seal that valve in the back. Um, and the next thing that's going to happen is this will say on, like so. Um, the heat uh, source in the Instant Pot will come on and it'll start to heat the liquid inside. And, um, and then it'll create that steam. And after we have the steam, we'll get that pressurized environment. The float pin will pop up to the top. And then um, the timer will come on. It'll count down from five minutes. So this should take, I would say, maybe 12 minutes uh, for that entire process to go from pressurization to completed cooking. Um, one of the things that is nice about the Instant Pot is um, you don't have to drain that pasta when you're done. All that liquid is going to get absorbed into the pasta itself. So it's a lot of really great tomato and chicken stock flavor um, and seasoning going right into the pasta and enriching it. So um, really great. Um, additionally, if you ever wanted to add anything else to this dish, you could do that. If you had like peas in the freezer or some spinach, you could toss that in there. Um, it would cook with it, and then you'd have like a nice vegetable pasta. Um, if you had canned goods, uh, you could throw them in at the end. If you had some, like could say, you know, trying to think of something again, peas or carrots or something you want to put in the pasta to add a little bit more, um, you know, vegetables and nutrients to it, you could do it that way too. All right, so. It's going to take a couple minutes to pressurize, then the timer will come on and it will start cooking.
All right, so the next dish we're going to work on is a, uh, a curry dish. Actually, I'll move these extra ingredients over here. We're going to need those later. Okay. All right, so. I'm actually just going to hit saute to get this warmed up. I'm also going to use saute normal on this pot. Um, so this is a curry dish. Um, I kind of asked around, and it seems like a lot of people did have curry powder in their pantry, so you can definitely use that. Um, so I have my curry powder right here. Uh, um, you can use that. Alternatively, if you... Um, want to next time you can go to the store um, you can usually find this in the international aisle this is tax curry paste um, please don't go out and try to buy it just because you saw it in this video um, use the curry powder instead if you haven't um, and if you don't have either of these you can definitely try to uh, make a version of this um, because curry powder in its essence is you know it's cumin it's turmeric uh, coriander it's going to be some cayenne pepper you can kind of Google a recipe and see like what you have in your in your cupboard and in your pantry and see if you can kind of come up with a close enough um, you know comparable dish to this or, or seasoning mix to replicate a curry. Um, alternatively, you could do uh, if you had chickpeas and you had a can of tomatoes and you didn't really have anything to do curry, um, you could maybe look up like a, a Moroccan chickpea dish, a Moroccan stew. You could do that too. Um, you could. It's basically the same exact. Thing is what we're making now. Um, the only difference would be you swap out the seasoning. Okay. So tonight I'm actually going to use the curry paste because I have it. Um, but if I didn't have it, I would use this curry powder. I would use two tablespoons. Um, if you like it really spicy, you could use three. Um, and then maybe toss some cayenne pepper in there too. All right. So the other ingredients we have, I'm just going to run through these quickly. Okay, so we have um, two tablespoons of olive oil. We have one onion that is chopped. Uh, we have one can of chickpeas. It's a 14 ounce can. We are using the curry paste. Um, alternatively, you could use the curry powder. I'm using one can of diced tomatoes. Um, same recommendation as the um, pasta. If you don't have diced tomatoes, you could easily substitute um, you know, stewed tomatoes, just tomato sauce, um, any tomato acid based thing work well with this. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of sugar to help sweeten it. I'm actually going to throw in some chopped spinach. Uh, I have some frozen spinach in the freezer. And um, if you want to, you can always thicken this with a slurry. Um, you know, you can let it cook down um, if you have the time. You can just put it on low, saute after it finishes cooking, and let a lot of that water cook off. Um, and basically, you know, just boil that water off like you would. Um, any type of sauce that you're doing at home. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and add in this oil. I already feel it's kind of hot in there. Yeah, it's good to go. So we've got our onions in there, and we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to just Saute these and cook them until they get soft. Of course, I'm still kind of getting used to uh, <laughs> the webcam being opposite of wherever I move. So every time I go one way, it's kind of <laughs> I, I go the other way on the screen. So it's a little confusing and disorientating for me, but uh, I'm getting used to it. So um, just bear with me. <laughs> Let's take a look in here. So one of the questions I get um, asked a lot about the Instant Pot is, you know, what are one of the things that you didn't realize was going to happen? Um, one of the things I didn't realize that I was going to get into when I started using it is that the expedited cook time, those faster cook times, really led me down the road of um, 
trying a lot more things because I wasn't investing two or three hours in making a meal. I think we've all had the experience where we're kind of like thumbing through a uh, cookbook or um, you know a magazine or looking at something online and you see that uh, you know oh this looks great but oh my gosh two hours and I don't even know how it's going to come out. You're a little hesitant to maybe experiment but with the Instant Pot if it's you know 30 minutes you might be more prone to try new things. So we've tried a bunch of different things in here. We've tried making some ramen soup. We've tried doing you know, Thai curries, Indian curries, um, more traditional American dishes that I didn't really make often in the past, like pot roast. Um, yeah, I've definitely expanded my my horizons by, by using the Instant Pot. So it's been really fun. It's been a really fun um, journey to kind of feel the different things that you can make. Um, All right, so we have our um, onions are in here. We're going to go ahead and add in uh, the curry paste. And if I was using powder, I would add it in at this time, too. So adding it in at this time actually helps release a lot of that flavor inside of the um, curry paste or the curry powder. Um, I'm going to add in my diced tomatoes. The crying child in the background, I'm not sure if you can hear it. I'm sure she's fine. I did. Jesse would like me to point out that this is not child abuse. It's just um, the product of two extremely clumsy people having a clumsy child. I have my chickpeas here. I actually da, 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 drained this can earlier today, so I'm going to toss it right in. And the other item I'm going to add is the sugar. And we are going to use three quarters of a cup of water. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give this a good stir. To make sure everything's combined. Make sure nothing is sticking on the bottom of the pot. If things end up sticking on the bottom of the pot, you might get something called the burn message. Um, the burn message basically means that. Uh, the Instant Pot heat source recognizes that it is either is working too hard. Um, the, the reason that it would be working too hard is because it is trying to cook something that's stuck on the bottom of the pot. Um, so usually this would be thick sauces that are really sugary. Um, if you don't have enough liquid in the pot, these are the instances where you would get that message. All right. Um, the solution or the resolution to this would simply be to add more liquid and kind of open it up and scrape everything off the bottom. Um, if you can't do that, then you might have to just toss it and start over again. Um, I hate to do it, but occasionally it does happen. All right, so I have some frozen spinach. It is deep frozen in the brick. Put it in right on top. We're going to turn it like so. I'm going to hit pressure cook. Well, first thing I'm going to do is actually hit cancel because we are no longer sauteing, right? I want to pressure cook. I will set this for five minutes. I'm going to make sure that this is in the seal position, and we're going to let it start cooking. Um, I actually see that the float pin on our pasta dish has risen to the top, so that means that um, in the next uh, minute or two, um, we should see the timer come up on the uh, the pot here and uh, the pot here and uh, it'll start counting down and uh, meaning we are actually pressure cooking at that point. Okay, so I'm gonna just shuffle this pot back here. I'm gonna move these ingredients over to here. And 
and then I'm going to actually, oh, you can see that the, the timer has come up, five minutes on a pasta dish. This one to the front. Okay. So yes, I own three instant pots. I know it's a lot, but um, I actually have another one that's not featured in the video tonight. Oh. Good night. This is Rose. Say good night, Rosie. Bye. Say night night. Thank you, Rosie. Good night. Go see Mama. Here. Okay. All right, COVID quarantine cooking, right? Baby's coming in. It's water. Okay. So we learned how to make um, pasta dish, a curry dish, um, but you know what else would you want to make with your instant pot? I know on the few occasions that I have gone to the grocery store, the um, Sweet style has been ravaged. Uh, ice cream's gone, um, cookies. So people are definitely stress eating during this time and uh, craving some sweet things. So if that is the case, um, you can always try to make something with the ingredients you have at home. We're going to do a Reese's dip right now. Um, so that's basically going to be some uh, chocolate chips, semi sweet chocolate chip morsels. Maybe you have some left over from the last time you made chocolate chip cookies. Um, hopefully you have something in the house. If you don't have the semi-sweet morsels, you could really use any type of melting chocolate. Um, it would probably work with this just fine. Um, we are going to use some peanut butter. I'm actually going to be using this natural peanut butter. I really like it. I think it tastes great. Um, I think the only ingredients in here are, let's check, our peanuts. So um, not a ton of sugar. And it's nice and... Uh, the consistency is really nice for doing this dip. Um, you're going to need uh, either a cooking spray or um, anything really to, to grease the, the dish that we're making this in. Um, you're going to need your trivet that we mentioned earlier. Um, you're going to need a piece of tin foil. Um, we are going to use pretzels to dip. Um, or s'mores in, so you're going to get that nice savory, uh, savory and sweet bite. Um, you could easily use, you know, vanilla wafers, graham crackers, um, really anything you want, apples, um, as a delivery mechanism for the tip. Um, and the other thing you're going to need is really just a oven safe dish. You could use, I have these small baking dishes, they're like six inch dishes. Um, I think in the six quart pot, is this one you can use um, six to seven inch dishes and in the eight quart pot you can go a little bit bigger um, so you, you can kind of um, figure out what need you have based on the size of pot um, and you can always google this or go on, go on Amazon and see uh, what size baking dish you need so you can just you know put in a baking dish for six quart instant pot and it'll give you a bunch of recommendations um, right there. Um, you could also use Pyrex, one of these guys. Um, as long as it's oven safe, you can put it in there. I actually use that sometimes to um, make rice at the same time or um, other you know, grains at the same time that I'm, I'm cooking my uh, main course. So, um, yeah, there, there's definitely different options. Ramekins, small ramekins if you have them, porcelain dishes, so you can use those too. Okay, so uh, this one's pretty simple. We're going to spray our whatever dish you use. Um, basically, just make sure that it does not stick. So you're going to take your chocolate and sprinkle it in on the bottom. Pretty much just cover the bottom of the dish. We are going to use some peanut butter. You're going to want to use about a half a cup here. You can kind of just spread it around. We're going to mix it afterwards, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. 
let the data end come. I will point out something else here. I'm going to jump back to the pasta dish for just a second. Um, the pasta dish is finished, so I'm going to release the pressure right now. I don't want it to become overcooked. So one, two, three, let's let the pressure out. It's going to be really loud. You can use um, a dishcloth to kind of muffle it a little bit. And throwing the dishcloth on top is a good tip because um, there's a lot of oil and fats that might be released in there. Starches too, so if you're making something like risotto um, or anything, sometimes even rice, um, it'll come out with the steam. So if your cabinets are kind of right above um, your Instant Pot on the counter like they would be at our place um, if we weren't doing it at the kitchen table, um, it can really get on there and make it greasy and kind of gross. If you throw that on there like right away, it'll catch a lot of that um, those fats and those starches um, as they are released from the pot. So it's a good little tip, um, and it also makes it not as loud. Okay, um, the other thing I will call out on this pasta dish, right now it says L001. So a lot of people ask me, what does that mean? So that basically means that the um, Instant Pot is finished cooking, and that um, now it is basically tracking how much time has lapsed since the pressure cook is finished. So that's what L stands for, lapsed. So some recipes um, will give you directions that will say, you know, cook for 10 minutes and then five minute natural release. So a lot of people don't know what that means. But basically what that means is we need to wait five minutes before we open the lid um, after the cook is finished. So there is really no way to set a timer for five minutes. To automatically have the lid open for you um, on these specific models. So what the Instant Pot has given you is an indicator on here for how much time um, has the lid has gone by since your cook is finished, and that's the last time. So now, if I had a recipe that said natural release and a time, I could reference this to align with the time um, and the directions of the recipe. Okay, so that's what that is there for. What I do if there is like a if it is a longer one, I'll take um, I will take like my phone or my oven timer when I hear the, the beep for the pressure cook finished, and I will just set that so I can you know go about my business in the house um, if I'm not going to be in that room. Okay. Alternatively, there's another direction that'll just say um, full natural release or just natural release. Basically what that means is that you are not going to do anything until the pin um, on top falls down on its own. Once that pin comes down, it is safe to open the Instant Pot. Our pin has actually just come down. So we'll open it up. All right, so we'll get to that in a second. We're going to finish up our dessert first. Okay, so we have our peanut butter and our chocolate chips in here. Our dish is greased. We're going to go ahead and put a piece of tinfoil on top. The reason we put tinfoil on top is because um, when you are pressure cooking, there's going to be condensation in there. You saw all that steam that just came out, right? And we don't want drops of water going into our yummy dip, right? Because that would make it wet and not as good. So we put a piece of tinfoil on top to protect it. All right. We're going to put in some water because anytime you do a pressure cook, you need water. So I'm going to use one cup of water. I'm going to use this rivet that came with the instant pot. So everything's on here like this. We're going to drop it right in. We're going to put our lid on. Come on. Okay. It's much easier to do when you're standing up and you can see it. Pressure cook. And we'll do this one for five minutes as well. Um, I'm just going to point out too that our chickpea curry um, timers come on, so it is now pressure cooking. All right, I'm going to move this stuff to the side. All right. So what we can 
do now. No, it's not. <laughs> my youngest or my oldest was just asking if the dessert was ready yet. We just started the dessert, so not yet. We're gonna put in our butter, okay? We'll just go ahead and put it right in like that. And we're gonna stir. Butter's melting. We're going to go ahead and take our cheese. We're going to put that in there. I'm going to stir that up. And this is going to help make it nice and rich. Give it some umami, make it creamy. That tastes great. Excellent. Next thing we're going to do is add in our cream. We're going to use a half a cup of cream. I said if you don't have cream, you could use milk. Um, if you don't have any milk or anything like that, you could eat it at this point. Um, if you don't have cheese, you also don't need that. Um, you would have just basically a nice pasta and tomato sauce. Okay. So, we finish this up, we're going to go ahead and scoop some out so you guys can see what it looks like. All right. So, you can see we have a really yummy. Uh, pasta dish. I'm trying to get it right in front of the camera. There you go. Steaming, ready to go. Give it a taste test. Uh, all right. Taste test. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's delicious. I do say so myself. All right, so um, I'm going to hit cancel on that because we're not using it anymore. Yum. Okay. Family likes it. That's good. <clears throat> All right. So we have about a minute left on our chickpea. Um, our Reese's dip will be done probably in the next like seven or eight minutes, so I hope you guys can hang with me a little bit past eight. We should be able to get a good look at that. Okay. Um, any questions? Anyone want to fire any questions in the chat? Feel free. Um, if not, I'll just continue to kind of um, go through some of the, the tips and tricks that I, I've come to know over the last two years. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So um, my name is Aiden. I have a website. It's called Patrick with Passion. Safe. Told you the camera. Um, CrusherCookerPassion.com. I put links to all the recipes in the um, description there for the live video. I hope they showed up. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and release the Crush on this chickpea curry. I started doing programs um, about a year after I started the website. Um, my wife, who used to work in a public library, as I mentioned earlier, um, said, you know, people love the cooking programs, you should give it a shot. So I actually did my very first one test program for free at Elwood Library um, January of 2019. So um, it went really well. And uh, since then, I think I've done over 70. Um, so it's, it's been great. I've been getting out there and teaching people how to use the Instant Pot. Um, I'm trying to help them you know, through their, their cooking journey. Um, one of the main reasons I got into using it is because uh, you can really do what I like to call passive cooking. 
So in its essence, you know, we did a little sauteing up here in the beginning, but really I just put everything in and dumped it in and, and turned it on and walked away. Um, so, you know, I have two small kids, as you saw, and um, finding time to hang out with them is not always easy, especially when they go to bed, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. So when you work a regular job and then you have to come home and cook dinner, um, sometimes it can make it a little tough to get that quality time. But with the Instant Pot, it made it a little bit easier because then I could really just cook for five or 10 minutes put it in, um, let the pressure cooking and do its thing, and then open it up and we could have food, uh, you know, home-cooked meals on a regular basis. So for me, that was great. And that's kind of why I fell in love with this device. Um, there's definitely a lot of other devices in the market. Um, you have uh, Ninja makes one. Um, Crock-Pot Express is another one. Um, there's a few other manufacturers out there. Um, um, there's, I think it's called Neely. That's another one. Um, so there's a lot of great options. Um, there's, you know, some off brands too. Um, I've never used any of those other brands, so I can't really say how well they work, but in my mind, it's probably like a toaster. Um, you know, you can get a toaster for 10 or $15, or you can get the, you know, the super deluxe model. Um, it doesn't always speak to the quality of the product, so check out reviews um, and see which ones work for, for you and your price range. All right, so I'm going to take the lid off of this tricky curry. Anytime you take off the lid too, there's probably going to be a lot of water that comes out. So you can always kind of just, when you take it off, maybe hold it for a second, let it, let it drip, kind of flip it up. It might save you some cleanup on the table later. All right. Okay. Yeah. There's a question if you can help them. Oh, okay. Thank you. Welcome. All right, so I'm just stirring this real quickly. So um, because we have the frozen spinach in there, it is a little bit watery. Um, and I think I heard there was a question in the chat. Um, okay, let me see what we've got here. Uh, yes, hang on one second. Can you send a sample to everyone watching? I saw that, Eric. Uh, yes, definitely. It's in the mail. Check tomorrow. Um, <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. And can you cook from frozen meat? Yes, you can cook from frozen meat. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that the chat didn't auto fill. This is only my second Facebook live. Um, so yeah, you can. Um, what you would want to do is um, put the, the meat or whatever you're cooking in the Instant Pot. Um, consult the manual, depending on what you're cooking, um, and get a recommended time and a recommended amount of liquid, and you can let it cook from there. So um, the, the frozen question, like, the example I always give is like chicken breast. You know, you get home and you're like, oh, no, I forgot to thaw the chicken breast. What are we going to do tonight? Um, you could throw in like three or four chicken breasts into the Instant Pot, one cup of water. Um, you know, you could season it however you want or season the liquid however you want and pressure cook it for anywhere from like, I'd probably say 18 minutes um, and we'll be cooked afterwards. So I personally like to do it um, after it's been unfrozen and completely thawed, but I've done it before. It comes out fine. Um, so yes, you can cook from frozen meat. All right, that answers your question. And uh, thank you for all the support there from Tina, Maureen, Eric, and Maria. Appreciate it. <laughs> and Carrie. All right. So because our chickpea curry looks a little bit watery, I'm going to go ahead and add a uh, flurry to it. Okay, so I'm basically going to just use some, some cornstarch. And what I'm going to do is okay, hit cancel, and I'm going to hit saute. So if I wanted to, I would basically, um, if I wanted to do this and I wasn't really trying to get it out to you guys in a decent amount of time for the class, I would um, I would just hit saute, and it would act like a boil, like a, like a stovetop pot, and the water would cook off and it would reduce naturally. Um, this is kind of the cheap way, but this is how we have to do it sometimes. So I'm going to use a little more than a teaspoon of cornstarch. Just a little bit of water in here. All right, give it a stir. Um, I like using cornstarch as opposed to flour. I just think it's a little bit smoother. We'll go ahead and pour 
And we'll give it a stir. I'm actually going to cancel. So that's going to thicken up. Um, and it looks like the timer on our dessert is up. I'm going to go ahead and release this. So the pressure is coming out of the Reese's dip. Um, so that will give it a stir. And then I think we might have um, somebody who wants to come in and taste test it. We're not quite ready yet. One second. <laughs> All right, so this is definitely thickened up a little bit. I'll give you an idea what this looks like. Serve this with some, some rice, some biscotti mice, or jasmine rice. I hate doing this here. It's really hard to handle. There we go. That's more or less what it looks like. You guys see that? So it's got some nice big pieces of chickpea in there, tomatoes, some spinach. Um, it would be great with some rice if you didn't have rice. You boil some potatoes and throw them in here, it probably tastes great too. One more taste test. Now I'm going to try to show up the camera. There we go. So that's what that looks like. Chickpeas and everything. Really tasty, nice amount of heat to it. So that's a great dish. Okay. So the the piece de resistance. The last thing we're gonna do is our Reese's dip. So we're gonna use this hot because this is going to be very very hot. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is. Take the tin foil off very carefully. Turn my hands. All right. And I'm going to stir it. So when you take it out, it'll kind of just be uh, set, you know, with the peanut butter on top. And uh, but then you stir it. And it combines and it looks delicious. And it also tastes delicious. All right. So we'll use some pretzels. And if you were ever doing like a party at your house and you wanted to do, um, you know, like individual desserts on each side of the table, you could really make a big thing of this and then kind of. You know, scoop it out and then give them a couple of different things to dip with. Like I said, you could use like Nilla wafers, graham crackers, you could use pretzels, maybe some apple slices, anything that goes well with chocolate and peanut butter. You could potentially use marshmallows. I mean, you could really do anything you wanted. Kind of put that at the center of the table, all the things you could dip with, and then maybe do like one ramekin for every two people. All right. Okay. So I would probably plate it like this, something like that. You know, kind of do a half dip in there. Amelia, want to come try? All right. We'll get a, a real kids' taste test to see if they like it. I think it's good. Give it a try. It's chocolate and peanut butter, okay? Hot. Too hot. <laughs> you want to try to blow on it and cool it? Try again. It's 
still hot, but does it taste good? Ah. <laughs> now the whole family wants to try. <laughs> it's too hot. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, so that is our program. That is our Instant Pot 101. Um, Leah, Isaac, how bad could it be? It is not bad, Leah. It is really good. <laughs> it's just a little too hot for the, the mother of oil. Anyway, um, thank you so much, everybody. Um, again, everybody, please stay safe. Thank you so much to Elwood Library for hosting me and letting me do this program. Um, it means a lot to me to be able to go out and connect. You know, doing these programs has really become part of my life. I'm out on the road two nights a week meeting with people, talking about Instant Pots. Um, and then when this all happened, I really couldn't do it. Um, so it was kind of a shock. But, uh, you know, we're, we're slogging along and making our way through. Um, again, my, my advice to everybody, please stay safe. Please don't go out there and get any ingredients that you don't need to get. Um, only buy the essentials. Um, big thank you to all of our essential workers out there. Thank you so much. Um, you know, you guys are doing all the hard work. Um, we're all stuck in our house complaining, but you're the ones that are really making the difference out there. Um, and, you know, sooner or later we're going to get through this, and I'll be back in libraries doing these programs for people and actually giving you the food in person um, and, you know, talking to you and answering your questions. So thank you so much. Uh, again, thank you to Elwood. Thank you to everybody on the staff there. And uh, I hope to do this again. Um, do okay, everybody, thank you. Um, and please, recipes. Um, are, are in the post. If not, I will give them to the library to post again. Um, my name is Aiden. My website is pressurecookerpassion.com. Please visit it and 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 fill out your census uh, because apparently it's very important to libraries and everybody. All right, guys. Take care and have a great night.